Magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Oh, Zandla, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, let's magnify the Lord, for He is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. One more time. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God some praise. Hosanna, blessed be the rock of our salvation. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Father, we thank you again for another opportunity to be in the house of prayer one more time. Another Palm Sunday of a brand new year. And God, we've been having a rough time down through the years. The last two years, Lord, so many things have happened and so many people have been cut off and gone. But your grace and your mercy have found us once again and allowed us to be here on this Sunday morning. God, we just thank you, God, because there's food on our table and clothes on our back, shoes on our feet. You woke us up early this morning. You kept us out of every hurt, harm, and danger. 
thank you for bringing us back one more time, another day that you have kept us in our mind, have stayed on you. Lord, we thank you for being here at the Carter Community AME Church, Lord, today. Thank you for our pastor, Dr. Reverend Miller. Amen. Thank you for his word. Thank you for his guiding and his teaching. We want to thank you that you blessed him to see another birthday, God. We pray that you continue blessing him and his family and, and the, the Miller family right now and every family that represents in the Carter Community Church, Lord. Bless the organization. Bless your people everywhere right now. We have to, to look on the music department. Bless Brother Thomas, God, and bless right now, God, all those from the choir, the young people right now, God, touch them and move. Those that are furthering their education, God, go with them and guide them and keep them right now. God, those that are going through storms and battles and relationships right now, God, and those that are having problems in their homes, God, we know that you're able, you can heal. Remember the sick and the shut-in right now. Somebody is depressed, somebody is lonely, but Jesus, you're the answer for the world today right now. Oh, God, we ask that you would uh, examine each and every one of us, Lord. Search us, Lord. We said anything, done anything, thought anything that was not like you, that was unpleasing in your sight. We ask that you forgive us, Lord. Oh, God, that our blessings would never be hindered. Oh, God, we thank you, God, because you're a good God. We like you and I love you because you look over all of our faults and you see our needs right now. And God, we pray that the day that you would bless our manservant, you bless him with a word fresh from heaven, God, anoint him. God, give him a word, give him the strength and courage. Let the anointing cover him as he minister to us and bless us today with what you have given him from heaven. And God, I just thank you, God, for every person right now at the sound of our voice in social media. Those that are on Facebook right now, God, I pray that you meet their needs. Those that are listening by phone in whatever way that they are listening, those that are here in person here in the sanctuary, bless every person from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Remember our secret prayers. God, there's somebody who wanted to be in church but was not able to get here. But right where they are, God, you can touch them right now. You can move in their life. You can bless their homes. Look on those grandchildren, Lord. Look on those aunts, nieces, and nephews, every family member, those that are lost and don't know you as their personal savior. Oh, God, I pray that you touch them and give them a mind to be saved. Right now, God, those that need more faith, increase their faith. Those that need financial blessings and breakthroughs, God, supply those needs. And God, we just thank you right now because we realize if it had not been for you, we would have been cut off a long time ago. But God, you've been so good to us, God. And we're not here to complain, but we're here to say thank you, God. And we realize if you never do anything else for us, God, you already done enough. And so we will bless you at all times. And our praises will continually be in, in your mouth, God. We are always praise you, God. Your praises, God. We would praise you, God, in the morning and praise you in the evening, God. And every time we think of your goodness, we would praise you right now. And even when the storm come, God, we'll praise you for the storm because you, we know that you will bring us out. And we know that everything is just a test. And so we thank you for what you're doing in ministry and all those ministries everywhere, whatever denomination it is, whatever pastor or leader, God bless them everywhere because we're one body of Christ. Amen. And we thank you, God. And we ask that you take us further in this service. Let thy will be done. Not our will, but your will, God. In any way you bless us, God, we will be satisfied. Any way you use us, we will be satisfied. God, any way you touch us, we will be satisfied. Thy will be done right now. And so we thank you, God. And so from the top of our head to the sole of our feet, we decree our blessings. We decree our healings. And we give it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in Jesus' name, we thank you, God. And we say, amen. Praise God. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You 
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Does anybody know that God is worthy to be, pra to be praised? We give God praise, we give God honor, we give God glory for the great things God has done, the great things God is doing, and the great things God is about to do. I am the Reverend Dr. Kevin D. Miller, and I serve as the pastor of the Carter Community AME Church located in Jamaica, New York, where the people of God truly want to worship a God who is worthy to be praised. Beloved, as we come together for worship today, can we please just give God praise for what God did for us last week? Hallelujah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, you don't have to stop because I'm talking. You can keep praising. Hallelujah. Was God not in the virtual house? Oh, we bless the name of the Lord our God, and we thank God for the Reverend Raquel Gill, the Reverend Benjamin Hall, the Reverend Scott Oslin, the Reverend Russell Marquis, and the Reverend Tamoya Buckley David. God moved through those vessels, and we give God praise. Uh, family, I also want to say this. Somebody asked me this morning. First of all, thank you for all of the birthday shout-outs and wishes and prayers and everything. I usually try to keep my birthday a little bit undercover, but, um, but I think it was Reverend Coleman actually that started it off on social media and I was like, it's over now, it's over now. Yeah, but somebody, somebody asked me today, um, how was my birthday? And I said, can I just be, can I be real about it? And she said, yeah, and I said to her, I said, I've got to believe that this is possibly the best birthday I've ever had. God is so amazing and so gracious and so overwhelming. And uh, just to be in, in prayer throughout the day and to be in prayer with so many of you yesterday morning, um, it is just a wonderful gift. So I just thank God for another day. And I thank God for everybody who thought enough of me to pray, reach out, text, call, hug me, whatever it is. I thank God for each and every one of you. Beloved, just a few announcements as we go through this worship experience. Today at one o'clock, Kingdom Keepers for Christ. And we thank God for our young people. If you have young people, invite them, encourage them to join us every Sunday morning at one o'clock only on Zoom. You see the information on your screen. This is the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday. So after service, to, well, yeah, at the end of service today, we have palms for everybody who's here, certainly to distribute and to share and to celebrate. The palm branches are a sign of our celebration of Jesus coming into Jerusalem during the final week. So we will celebrate that today and throughout Holy Week. Uh, there's so much going on this week. Uh, so Wednesday night, we invite you to join us for Bible study. Uh, you see the Zoom information there. For those listening on the prayer line, we'll give you every, we will give you every login number, every login meeting ID throughout the week because we don't want anybody to miss an opportunity to receive the blessings that God has for them. You also see the weekly scriptures on your screen. Uh, we'll be sure to share that at the close of worship today as well. So that's Wednesday during Holy Week. And then we move on to Monday, Thursday. And on Monday, Thursday, we will be in worship with uh, Allen Temple AME Church for the Monday, Thursday service. I will be participating in that service. So we invite you. Uh, on Thursday to join this worship experience where we reflect, we reflect, this is a short service, but it's powerful. And for those who had a chance to be a part of it over the last couple of years, we reflect on those last moments that Jesus spends time with his disciples before he's taken prisoner and ultimately led to the cross. So we invite you again, certainly to be a part of that worship experience Thursday evening. Friday, Good Friday service. Amen. Good Friday service, Carter Community at noon. We'll give you all the login information. This will be on Zoom as well and on our Facebook Live. 
So we invite you certainly to be a part of that. We have some wonderful, phenomenal preachers lined up. Uh, the Reverend Felix Delator. I think somebody here knows who that is. Amen. Uh, the Reverend Adenola Waterman French will be with us. The Reverend Dr. Craig Wright will be back with us. The Reverend Dr. Helen C. Wingate will be with us. The Reverend Brady Fun will be with us. And the Reverend Dr. Uh, Hugh Marriott will be with us. So we'll worship with them on Thursday. And I said, if you're going to put me to work Thursday night, then I got to put you to work Friday afternoon. So he's going to come in and we're going to give God an amazing praise during our noonday service. And if that's not enough for you, if that's not enough for you, we invite you right after our noonday service to get something to eat, get a little rest, and then come back at 730. Amen. Uh, we'll have an evening Good Friday service, and I will be preaching as a part of the lineup for the Greater Faith Baptist Church. Again, that information is on your screen as well. So we just, so just going to give God praise all through the week. Amen. After what God did last week, I think we can give God praise all through the week. So we absolutely give God thanks and praise. Beloved, I want to thank you as we come to our time where we can worship with our financial giving. Uh, we just give God praise. Just a reminder, next Sunday we, we will be receiving a sacrificial offering of $40 uh, in honor of the 40-day sacrifice that we've uh, journeyed on during this Lenten season. You've heard me say this before when I read God's word. I read about tithing. I read about offering. I read about sacrificial offerings tithing offerings and sacrificial offerings and we are a tithing congregation tithing is giving back 10 percent of what god has given to you god can do so much more with the 10 percent than you can with the 90 percent oh i know i'm not the only one who can bear witness to that but we give god praise and then next sunday in honor of the Lenten season we're asking everyone to participate in a sacrificial offering to join with me and with others of 40 dollars if you can and will or even $4, some, some combination, some uh, derivative of $40. But $40 is to ask, make a sacrifice that will be pleasing unto the Lord. In terms of ways to support the ministry, you can give using either Zelle or PayPal. Search Carter Community A-M-E at gmail.com. Again, Carter Community A-M-E at gmail.com. Or on your mobile device, use the Givelify app and search Carter Community A-M-E Church. If you're in the sanctuary today, you all know, but we're not moving around as we once did. But there's a basket and an offering receptacle in the back of the church. So please place your tithe and your offering into those receptacles. And the officers will take charge after service. Gracious God, we ask and pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless everyone underneath the sound of my voice. You are great. You are mighty. And God, you are worthy to be praised. God, you have reminded us that when we are going through what we are going through, that God, you are right there with us. So God, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for that and for so much more. So God, again, bless everyone, everyone who hears my voice today, everyone who will watch this at a later date, either on Facebook or on YouTube. God, we just pray that they will know that you are God and worthy to be praised. This is our prayer in Jesus' name, that the people of God say, amen. Amen and amen again. At this time, we'll have the reading of our scripture by Sister Denise Moore, who will read into our hearing out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Again, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. And after the reading of the scripture, we'll have a selection from the Reverend Emmanuel Coleman and my sisters and my brothers, wherever you may be, God has a word for God's people today. I will be reading out of the Holman Standard Christian Bible, and it reads as such. He entered Jericho and was passing through. There was a man named Zacharias, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was not able because of the crowd. Since he was a short man, so running ahead, he climbed up a sycamore tree to see Jesus, since he was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, 
Zacharias, hurry and come down, because today I must stay at your house. So he quickly came down and welcomed him joyfully. All who saw it began to complain. He's, he's going to lodge with a sinful man. But Zacharias stood there and said to the Lord, look, I'll give half of my possessions to the poor. Lord, and if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'll pay back four times as much. Today, salvation has come to this house, Jesus told him, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save the lost. I'm going to read that again. For the son of man has came, has come to seek mm -hmm. and to save the lost. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his words. Amen. I feel like praising, praising him. I feel like praising, praising him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like praising, praising him. I feel like praising, praising him. Freedom in the morning. Freedom all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. I feel like praising, praising God. How do y'all feel like praising God? I feel like praising, praising God. Freedom in the morning. Freedom all night long. I feel like praising, praising Him. Let me tell y'all this. Oh, if you don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. I said, if you don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. Oh, praise them in the morning. Praise them all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. I'm going to say that one more time. I said, if you don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. If you don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. Praise them in the, in the, in the morning. Praise them all night long. I feel like praise them, praise them. Oh, I said, you don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. Somebody don't know how good he's been. You don't want to praise them, don't hinder me. Oh, praise them in the morning. Praise them all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, I feel like clapping, clapping my hands. Everybody ought to clap. Feel 
like clapping, clapping my hands. Oh, pray to me in the morning. Pray to me all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, he brought me, brought me from a mighty long way. Can I get a witness right now? Oh, he brought me, brought me, brought me from a mighty long way. Oh, pray to me in the morning. Pray to me all night long. I feel like praising, praising him. Oh, God been good to me oh i don't know about y'all but i can say it god been good to me you know that's why i'm going to pray in the morning yeah pray them all night long i feel like praising praising him i'm gonna have to let it go whoa praise 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 him Everybody ought to praise, 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 praise him. You know when you praise him, you know what? Early in the morning and late at night, I feel like praising, praising God. I'm going to say it one more time in case y'all didn't hear me. You don't want to praise him, don't y'all hinder me. Oh, if anybody... Nobody want to pray them, but don't hinder, hinder me. You know why? Because my mind is made up. Pray them in the morning, yeah. Pray them all night long. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. I feel like praising. I feel, yeah, feel like praising. God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Feel like praising him. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray. That you would once again stand with me and yes, strengthen Lord. me. Yes, Lord. That your message will be preached fully through me. Yes, Lord. That all would hear. Amen. Beloved, I draw your attention to the Gospel of Luke. 19th chapter, 9th and the 10th verses where you'd find these words. And Jesus said to him, Today, Salvation has come to this house. Yes. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. For time this morning, I want to speak to the sermon title, Changing Perspectives. Changing Perspectives. The Gospel of Luke lets us know that God is serious about his commitment to us. It lets us know that God is so serious about his commitment that God is not swayed by the rules, the regulations, and the guidelines of society. The Gospel of Luke lets us know that God is, in fact, superior over all of these things. God does not have to consult with us before God decides to do anything. We must consult with God. God doesn't need to consult with us. When God needs to have a consultation, God is really just speaking with himself. Because God is above all things and all people. The Gospel of Luke lets us know that when God formed the world, God had all of us in mind. God did not create the world just for a select few. God does not make decisions based upon ethnicity, upon gender, 
upon location or, upon, or, or with finances as a part of the consideration. No, God is so above all those things. And when you begin to read this 19th chapter in the Gospel of Luke, the Bible lets us know that Jesus was passing through the region called Jericho. And while passing through Jericho, there was a tax collector named Zacchaeus. We don't know much about him. We don't know if Zacchaeus is a family man. We don't know if Zacchaeus is Jew or Gentile. We don't know much about Zacchaeus, but what we do know is that Zacchaeus, that Zacchaeus, that Zacchaeus was a sinner. What we do know, what we do know about Zacchaeus is that he was short in stature. What we do know, what we do know in verse 8 is that Zacchaeus was also a swindler. Sinful, short, and a swindler. We don't know much about him, but the Bible lets us know that, that Jesus was passing through the region and somebody must have told Zacchaeus about the Savior. Because when Zacchaeus went to see the Savior, it's clear that he couldn't actually see the Savior. Because the crowd was so thick. The people were so tall. I don't know what, the, what delayed him, Reverend Coleman. But he didn't get there in time to have a front row seat. So by the time he arrived, the crowd was too vast. There were so many things that was in between him and Jesus. Which prompts the question this morning. How many things do you let get in the way to get between you? And Jesus. It prompts the question because, because beloved, uh, whatever it was, he wasn't in the front. He couldn't see the man. And there are times in our lives where we have allowed things to get in between us and God. You lose your job. And now you don't want to talk to God anymore. You get a doctor's report that's not favorable. And you allow the doctor's report to get in between you and God. Somebody stepped on your foot three years ago. And you still bent out of shape about it. You've let that one situation get in between you and God. Somebody sat in your seat, church folk. You mad at the person sitting at you in your seat? You mad at the usher for allowing someone to sit in your seat? You mad at the pastor for not getting on the usher? For letting a person sit in your seat? Just mad about it. Some of us sitting here today haven't spoken to somebody in our family over some stuff that they probably have forgotten about. But yet we allow it to get in the way of us being able to see Christ. People are mad at the pastor because of something I did or failed to do. You didn't have to say so true, Sister Morrison. <laughs> Reverend Coleman, that's not the kind of help I'm looking for in this sermon. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. And let, me, and let me give some balance to my statement. There's some things other people have done 
that I've allowed to get in the way of my relationship with God. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So that means when you show up and try to see God, you can't see God. So what must we do? We must change our perspective. And I want to give you three things. I don't often preach a three-point sermon, but I want to give you three things on this Palm Sunday that I believe will help you in changing your perspective. The first thing is this. You got to believe in what you cannot see. You've got to believe in what you cannot see. You see, beloved, Zacchaeus, look at the text. Zacchaeus is there, and he's there to see God, but he can't see God because of all the things that's in between him and God. Zacchaeus has to make a decision, and he chooses to believe that on the other side of the obstacles, there's still God. He chooses to believe that, that whatever it is he's got to deal with on the other side. God is still moving. And sometimes, beloved, that's what's required of us. Even when you can't see God, you got to believe God is there. Even when you don't see God moving, you got to believe that God is moving. Even when you're not clear that God is paying attention, you still got to believe that God is paying attention. Even when you think that God has forgotten about your prayers, you still got to believe that God doesn't forget that you're called out to him. Zacchaeus had to believe in what he could not see. He's focused on God. And whatever God is doing, he knows he wants to see God for himself. Yesterday, yesterday, I, I, I thank God. God woke me up early in the morning. And I had decided that I had wanted to go for a walk over the Hudson River. But when I got up early in the morning, at 5 in the morning, it's raining. See, I wanted to go for a walk. I wanted to talk to God. I, I wanted to see the sunrise over the Hudson River. That was my plan. As soon as I checked the weather report, the weather report said, said that it was going to be rainy and cloudy all the way up until 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I never saw a sunrise at 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So now I'm thinking to myself, well, maybe I won't go. There'll be other opportunities. I'll go next week. But I got on my knees and, and I was in my devotion time and, and God said to me, well, what is this about? thought you was going to go have a walk with me and have a talk with me. I said, well, God, it's raining outside. It's a little damp, a little misty. But then God said something to me in my spirit. God said, God said, what, what was this about the sunrise? Or was this about the rising of the sun, the S-O-N? And I realized in that moment that whether I saw the S-U-N rise or not, God was still worthy. I got up off my knees. I got dressed. I went for my walk with God. And it was amazing in the rain. Last week, I preached that the, sometimes the storms are necessary. Well, in the rain, God was washing my soul and washing my mind. I still believed I was going to experience God even though I couldn't see it. And sometimes, beloved, we have got to press on, even when it, when it seems like everything and everybody is around us. Those of us that, that are older than 14 years old, just think about what God has allowed you to see just in the last 14 years. You saw the first black president of the United States. You saw the first Black first lady and the first black first family of the United States. You saw the first Latino woman confirmed to be on the Supreme Court of the United States. I'm just talking the last 14 years. You saw Vice President Kamala Harris 
be elected into the position just in the last. And it's an amazing image. When, when I think about President Joe Biden, when he gave his address to, con to Congress on the right, Vice President Kamala Harris, on the left, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, that's something we've never seen before. And then last week, When the confirmation went through, now we can say to the Honorable Ketanji Brown Jackson, Supreme Court Justice. And I think about the grueling confirmation hearing, how she sat there with no notes, taking every question taking every attack, if that's not the hand of God. But every single one of them had to see beyond the obstacles. You want a change in perspective? You got to believe in what you cannot see. Secondly, secondly in the text, if you want a difference and a change in your life with a change in perspective. The second thing is this. You've got to be willing to rise above your situation. you got to be willing to rise above your situation. Look at the text. Jesus cannot be seen. But Zacchaeus makes a decision. That, that, that he's going to do whatever he can to still see Jesus. Zacchaeus, think about it, family. He could have just went home. Could have said to his family and friends, the next day, you know how we do. Oh, I was there, but, you know, I just had to leave. Zacchaeus has money. He probably, think about it, if, this, if it was this day, he could have paid somebody to take pictures. Show me the pictures tomorrow. He could have went home thinking, maybe, maybe I could catch the, the, the news report on, on the Jericho television network. No, he makes a decision to stay in it. And look at what he does. He moves away from the crowd. Somebody missed it. You want to get close to God. Sometimes you got to move away from the crowd. You got to say, look, God is passing through. And I, I've got to be in a position to be able to see God. You see, a part of the problem for some of us, some of us have gotten so comfortable in the crowd. That you're afraid to move when God says move. God tells you to fast. No, you're too comfortable in the crowd. God says set aside some prayer time. You're too comfortable in the crowd. God tells you to call this person. You don't want to do it because you're too comfortable in the crowd. And that's why, that's why, that's why you're not blessed the way God wants you to be blessed. You're missing your blessing because you can't see your blessing and because you don't want to shift your position. And you'll tell everybody, well, I wanted to, but. Listen, family, if you don't get anything else out of this message, it is impossible to glorify God and glorify your problems at the same time. You got to pick a side. Tweet that. Post that. Share that. Like that. It's impossible to glorify your God and glorify your problems at the same time. You got to pick a side. As the key it says, look, I got to get away from them. And then what does he do? gets away from them, and he elevates his position 
above his obstacles. He had to rise above it. Now see, now see, you could just have a shout with him saying, I'm going to go climb the tree. But mother, understand what happens here. Zacchaeus isn't just a regular dude. Everybody knows he's a tax collector. Everybody knows he's got money. So once he decides to climb the tree, what Zacchaeus is really doing is saying, my status doesn't matter more than me seeing God. So when he starts to climb the tree, Zacchaeus is not concerned about his bank account. Zacchaeus is not concerned about what people might say. Zacchaeus is not concerned about people talking about him because his only concern is saying, I've got to change my perspective if I'm going to have a chance to see God. But see, I don't want you, beloved, to think that when I say rise above it, that when I say elevate it above his position or his situation, I don't want you to think that what I mean is that he climbed higher up in the tree. What he does by going up in the tree is that he elevates God above his situation. See, let me put it to you this way. When you go into your prayer, when you say to God, God, I'm going to turn down my plate, what you're really saying is, God, I'm elevating you above my situation. I'm rising. I'm allowing you to rise above my problems. When you say, when you say, I'm going to spend more time with God instead of, instead of texting or watching television, what you're really saying to God is that, God, look, you are more important than everything else I've got going on. See, when, when, when you say I'm going to spend more time reading God's word, what that is saying to God is that you could be watching TV. You could be on your device. You could be doing these things. But God, I'm saying to you that I'm lifting you up on my priority list. So when, so when Zacchaeus begins to climb the tree, what he's really doing is saying, God, I'm lifting you up above everything that's in between me and you. So that's how you rise above it, beloved. In that moment, Zacchaeus is saying, look at here. I don't care. I'm not going to let these obstacles. I'm not going to let the crowd. I'm not going to let the situation get in the way of me seeing God. So you got to believe beyond what you can see. You got to rise above the situation. But if you're going to change the perspective, the other thing God wants us to know is this. God wants us to know that God sees you. God sees you. When Zacchaeus climbs a tree, for Zacchaeus, it was about seeing God. When Zacchaeus climbs a tree, he wasn't looking to get anything from God except a chance to see God. And for so many of us, we think that the relationship with God is transactional. In other words, God, I went to church and I praised your name, so you ought to bless me. God, I went to church and I, I gave an offering, so you're supposed to bless my finances. God, I, I, I took two or three minutes in the morning to, to, to scan a devotional. God, you ought to protect me throughout the day. We think that it's transactional. But the reality is that once he goes up, he's not looking, at, looking for anything from God. All he wants to do is see God. And because he was humble enough to say, I want to see God, God said, look at here, but you, you made it, God said, you made it about me. Zacchaeus, now I'm making it about you. And when you do what God wants you to do, God will honor you like that. When you say, God, look, whatever it is you want, for your glory, God, I'll do it. When you spend time with the Lord and don't run around, tell her, I spent time with the Lord today. I, hey, hey, Sister Simba, I spent time with the Lord today. Hey, Brother Brewington, I spent time with the Lord today. When you make it about yourself, God is going to hold back the blessings. But when you make it about God, God 
will say, I see you. And God will call you by name. If you've been promoted, that means that God called you by name or called somebody else to call you by name. We give God praise. God sees you. And the Bible says, then he says, Zacchaeus, come on down because today I'm coming to your house. Does anybody know what it's like when God comes to your house? Does anybody know what it's like when you just in your living room? When you just when you just at your dining room table and you're like, whoa, I just felt the Lord. Because you were reading God when God comes to your house. All of a sudden, you just feel God's presence. And you just start shouting for no reason at all. All of a sudden, you just start singing. All of a sudden, you start worshiping. All of a sudden, you just start giving God. When God comes to your house, when your prayers start to get answered, when you was talking to God and now you can just go, mm, 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 mm. God, with your good God self, you start rocking. You start shaking. When God comes to your house, you just start singing. Mother, I can find a melody when God comes to my house. Maybe I can't sing outside the shower. Maybe I can't sing outside my house. But I tell you, when I'm walking across the bridge with Jesus, when I'm standing in the house giving him glory, all of a sudden, because of who he is, I give him glory. Because of who he is, I give him praise. Because of who he is, I lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. God comes to your house. If that don't change you, nothing will. When God shows up, if that doesn't turn you around, nothing will. When God comes on knocking on your door, say, God be the glory. He comes in. Everybody's talking about Zacchaeus. Who's, who, how can God go sit with a sinner? <laughs> who are they? Who are these people that are talking about you? I love the text. The kids don't say nothing to them. All he does is be in a conversation with God. When you change your perspective, don't worry about what anybody else has to say about it. You don't owe them an explanation. You don't owe them a definition of your praise. You don't owe anybody anything. What you do, what you need to know is that you owe it all to God. Because God will say to you as a sinner, just like God says to me as a sinner, today salvation has come to your house. And we give God praise. God saw Zacchaeus. God sees me and God sees you. And God hears and answers our prayers. I told you I went for this walk across the Hudson yesterday. In the rain. And I'm walking. Having a good time. And along the bridge, the walkway is only on one side. Way far on the other side, way far on the other side, I saw this little glimpse of sun. This little glimpse. And as I was walking back across the bridge, I was saying, well, I'm going to head back home because we have prayer at 9 o'clock. But I looked at my watch because I'm like, I'm seeing some sun. And the meteorologist said, we're not supposed to see sun until 2 or 3 o'clock. I'm talking about God, y'all. So instead of coming home, instead of being above on the bridge, I went down by the water. Got in my car and drove down by the water. And when I got down by the water, don't you know God with his good God self? I get there, and God opened up the windows of heaven. 
Reverend Hernandez, I, I don't know if you're watching today, but, but I could have went back home. But, but I went down to the water. When I went down to the water, God opened up the windows of heaven. And all of a sudden, it's shining through across the sky. Over the water was the sun. I had to check my watch because I, I thought maybe I missed the prayer call. Maybe it was 2 o'clock. But God said so very clearly to me, you don't have to worry about what flesh and blood says. I'm God. I allow the sun to shine through and I decide the sun is going to shine through. God said, don't worry about it. you. When you pray, you need to know I'll show up. When I get ready to show up, you need to know when you choose to spend time with me, God said he'll spend time with you. God said, look, look, some people understand he may not come when you want him, but he'll be right there on time. God opened the heavens. God said, let the sun shine through. I give you praise, God. You're worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, to the rising of the S-O-N through all eternity. We give God praise. Didn't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Our God, great, mighty, wonderful, awesome, powerful, loving, forgiving. There's no God like you, God. You've done so much. Thank you for coming to the house. Thank you for coming down my street. Thank you for picking me up. Thank you for turning us around to God. What I love about it is after all of that, Everybody who has something to say ain't got nothing to say no more. I don't care who it is who's tried to block your path from where you are, from your right here to your right there. I want you to know we serve a right here and a right there kind of God. God is with us right here and God will be with you right there. We serve a right here and a right there kind of God. God is great. And greatly to be praised. As we stand all over the sanctuary, I pray somebody today has been encouraged to change their perspective. Believe in what you cannot see. Rise above your situation. And know that God sees you. God, God is ready to come to your house. You hear me say it from time to time. Put your name in the text. Kevin, today, I need to be in your house. There may be somebody here in the sanctuary. There may be somebody listening and watching online. Wherever you may be, God is ready to come to your house. But you got to believe. Got to believe. You got to be willing to separate yourself from the distractions of this world and then rise above it. The Bible says that, 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 the, that the Lord still came to him. But when the Lord got to him, the Lord looked up and saw him. Because Zacchaeus had put the Lord above himself. There was no bigger person that day than Zacchaeus. Except for God. Except for God. But then when God sees you, God is going to change your house. Change your house, change your legacy, change your family. But you got to believe. If you have not made the most important decision, and that is, like Zacchaeus, to choose to change your perspective. To choose God over your problems. Do that today. Do it right now. God, we thank you for our sister. We thank you for our brother. We thank you for this message. 
Many of us got a story to tell how things were in between us and you. But God, we declare in the name of Jesus that we're moving away from those things, God. It's impossible, God, to glorify you and glorify our problems. God, we choose today to glorify you. Because it's clear, God, you're bigger than our problems. You're bigger than cloud cover over the Hudson. You're bigger. Well, you can just open it up just, and for nobody else, just for Kevin to see the sun break through. God, I thank you. I bless you. God, we thank you. God, we bless you. This isn't just my testimony. Somebody else here has a testimony about what God has done for them. So, God, we say thank you. Jesus, we say thank you. Holy Spirit, we say thank you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let the believers of God, the people of God say amen, amen, and amen again. You may be seated in God's presence. I'm sorry. <laughs> Beloved, today is Palm Sunday. And we thank God for what God has done. We thank God for every gift, every single blessing. But most of all, I thank God for the, for the pre-party. The text today was the pre-party. If you read a little bit further down, you read about Jesus going into Jerusalem. This was the pre-party. This crowd was the pre-party crowd. And God blessed the people. But today we absolutely give God praise for this celebration of the palms. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to need some help in a minute. So I'm going to, Kyra, you're going to do double duty today. You got that locked off for me, right? Okay. Give me just a second here. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I want to bless the palms so we can distribute them. And I don't know who got the palm branches, but thank you for picking them up. And I don't know who set them up up here, but thank you for setting them up. I'm presuming Sister Morris has helped to set the table, so thank you for doing that. We just bless God today. Oh, I got rubber bands I got to remove off of here. It's going, to be, it's, going to be, it's going to be next Sunday by the time I get this together. Y'all pray for the preacher. Don't forget the man. God's still coming. He's still coming. Don't let, don't let the obstacles of rubber bands get in the way of your blessing. Back in the day, I'd have somebody with me that would just, well. I'll keep that part of my background to myself. Let's let it suffice. They would have had no problem getting to the palm branches. Amen. So family, let me bless the palms. And then I'm going to draft Kyra and Michaela into assistance here to help share the palm branches. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this time of celebration. Thank you, God, for Jesus loving us enough to pass through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. Thank you, God, for letting us know that even though the world tries to put things in between us and you, even though we may put things in between us and you, 
God, you're still worthy to be praised. Zacchaeus didn't stop, and more importantly, God, you didn't stop. You kept on coming. And for that and so much more, people have been saved. So God, for this celebration for these palms, we ask now, God, that you would bless them. Let it be a reminder of the celebration of this Holy Week that Jesus came into the world. God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for the sacrifice and thank you for the rising up. Holy Spirit, we love you. Thank you for the strength to make it day by day by day by day. This is our prayer in Jesus' name that the people of God say, amen. Kyra and Mikayla, would you come here, please? Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah my prince of peace, and I worship you. you reign. Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah. Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. My prince. My prince of peace. And I worship you because of I'm going to take it to the top. Let's take it to the top. Because, 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 because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Kyra Michaela. Lord, I Stand with me. Lord, you reign in me. 
victory. Jehovah Shiloh. Jehovah Shiloh. Our Prince of Peace. Our Prince of Peace. Lord, we worship you. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Lord, you reign in victory. Lord, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shiloh. My Prince of Peace. My Prince of Peace. Lord, we worship you. Because Jehovah Jireh, without the music, without the music, without the music. Here we go, Jehovah Jireh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout to God be the glory. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout you're a great God. Somebody shout you're still making a way. Somebody say there's nobody like him. 
can make me doubt him. To God be the glory. Next Sunday is resurrection. This is just a pre-party, y'all. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. This is just a pre-party, y'all. If you, you better get loud now, because it's going to be loud next week. Hallelujah, he's worthy. God, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. And we bless and praise your name. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord watch over us. May the Lord continue to make his face to shine upon us and give us strength. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen again. God willing, family, will be right here, wherever here is, giving God praise on Resurrection Sunday. Go in peace. And may the God of peace go with you. Amen. Reverend Miller, I would like to present this to you. It's your birthday. Is it all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I hope the camera is still rolling. The camera is still rolling. All right. Amen. All right. We. Yes. Oh, okay. It's in a blue bag. I knew that was mine. I, I, blue, I needed me a blue, blue uh, a blue garment holder. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The Lord spoke to me, told me, bless you. It was your birthday on oh, yes, yesterday. Yes. At first, Amen. that your African Methodist preacher. I want to this. Oh. Shirt first. And at this gold. Uh, I'm a man of class, and I know you're a man of class. So I know it. I had to like it first. Know that you got to like it. This got to go with it. All right. And so the next time y'all do your Africa, I know it ain't blue, but you know you can take it from there. You know. Amen. Thank you so very much. Love Is you. Is the really camera still Happy on? Let me come too. over here. Let me just show everybody Amen. in the camera. Thank you so very much. Thank you. What a blessing. Hey, Amen. I like this. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the pipes and everything, we give God. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Can somebody help me for a second? I got too many things in my hand here. Hold on. All right. Wait a second. All right, here's what we're, we're going to do. Okay, let's see that. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, hold that for me. That is beautiful. Yes, I was giving him his hat so he put it on. Yeah, I got it. Yes, that's what I was going to do. Hey, look at that. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Look at. Now, Reverend Coleman said, Reverend Coleman said I was a man of class. All right. Now, I don't, I don't know if I'm a man of class. I am a man of class or not, but I know I look the part right now. 
Thank you so much. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Amen. Well, not next Sunday, but I think the Sunday after that, because next Sunday is resurrection, so I'll be in white again. But the Sunday after that, if I'm still breathing, we're going to give God praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, family, I love you. I don't know if the camera's still rolling or not. Listen, everybody at home, God bless you. God keep you. God watch over you. And Kingdom Keepers at 1 o'clock. Amen. You had me with the blue garment bag. I was, I was good with that.